There's a story that's told about Richard Burton, who was an, uh, an actor, a star of stage and screen and Hollywood's golden age. He was, uh, I think, seven times awarded the Academy Award. Very famous for his, his style of, uh, of declaiming and, and, and taking on very um, important texts like Shakespearean plays and things like that and, and doing them uh, to great acclaim. And the story goes that he was invited back to the little village in Wales where he had grown up. They were going to give him a, a testimonial. And so it was a big dinner and everyone in the community was invited, lots of speeches, and uh, he was invited to get up and, and respond to all the speeches. And when he had finished his remarks, he said, now I wonder, you know, I spent so much of my life on the stage and acting, uh, is there anything in particular that you would like to hear? A, a sonnet or a scene from a play that I've done? And everyone was a little hesitant to put him on the spot, but the vicar in the, in the parish church, uh, you know, a rather elderly man, kind of timidly put his hand up. And he said, well, I wonder if you would proclaim the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, That's always been my favorite. And Burton, who was an atheist, at least by this point in his life, thought about it for a moment and probably thought, well, the text in the King James Version is still beautiful poetry, whether you believe it or not. And so he agreed. He said, but Vicar, on one condition, when I'm finished, I'd like you to come up and read the same text. So Richard Burton read the 23rd Psalm with all of the, the classical training that he had received. He proclaimed it, declaimed it very, uh, very emotively and, and people were spellbound on the edge of their seat and as soon as he was finished they all jumped to their feet and gave him a standing ovation and then he asked them to be seated and he said now remember Victor you you promised and he this uh, clergyman came up and rather tentatively took the podium and almost without having to look at the text in front of him he proclaimed the 23rd Psalm and there was silence in the room. And when he finished, nobody stirred, except a few people who wiped a tear from their eyes. And they just kind of looked at one another and couples who were sitting together held hands and it was just quiet for a little while. And so Richard Burton got back to the podium. He said, you see the difference? I know the text. He knows the shepherd. Each of us in our own vocation, in our own state in life, using the gifts that God has given to us, each of us have to proclaim Christ to the world in whatever way he has in mind for us to do that. But we can't proclaim him unless we know him. If we only know the text, but we don't know the shepherd, then no matter how much of an impression we might make at first, it will ultimately fall flat. We won't introduce anyone. We won't allow anyone to encounter the Lord unless we have encountered him ourselves, unless we know him.
started ballet when I was five, just as like an after-school activity with my sister. And it, um, there was like a drive that I found that I wanted to keep going. Like I loved it so much and I wanted to, you know, pursue like the next level try and like to get into point shoes was like the next level and then to get into like a summer program or which is like a camp for ballet and you just train instead of like um, doing sports you just train ballet you do ballet so I kept doing like I just kept going and I, I just loved it and um, I was fortunate enough to get into the School of American Ballet in New York City um, when I was 13 and I stayed in the dorms there so um, I moved to New York City when I was 13 and I just fell in love with it I was just like I belong here like I felt the whole community I just felt like um, I fit in <laughs> and so like in, in a normal school I kind of felt out of place like I was smaller and I didn't play sports even though I wanted to I just I couldn't with ballet so um, when I got to New York, I felt like a sense of community and we were all there for like to pursue ballet. And then when I was 17, I got asked to join the New York City Ballet as an apprentice. Um, so I've been in the company now for 13 years and I'm a soloist dancer and it's, it's hard. Um, like it's a hard profession because there's really no um, you can't take that much time off because it's just so much harder to get back in shape. But so I'm always like training, either doing like a strength training or um, like learning different ballets just to keep going. And, and I think it's because I love it so much. But the older I get when I'm doing it and dancing, um, it's less about for other people and it's more about for God. <laughs> and giving him the glory because really like there were times where I'd, I'd like seek approval from my bosses and be like was I good enough you know and that only goes so far and you keep getting you're just like so down on yourself if you don't get that approval but ever since I switched that mindset of just dancing for God and like he gave me these gifts to give to people and show people and show people his glory so um, it completely changed the way I dance I think to to be able to just like he's the only approval I need <laughs> so yeah wanted to become an artist since I was a kid, you know, I always used to paint and draw when I was a baby. Um, and um, it just happened out of nowhere. So when I came to this country from my, you know, from Ecuador, I didn't know what to do with my life, so I went to art school. And, um, you know, it took me a while to understand that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and, and after I finished, I stopped because I didn't really see anything, you know, like greater than, you know. I stopped and I was like, okay, you know, I learned. Um, let me just keep it to myself, for myself. And, and that's it. And then um, one day my wife, Kimberly, she told me that, you know, she was like, um, you have a, a gift and, and you ha you're not, that, that you're not using. And that really impacted my life, right? Because what we want to do is, we want to glorify God with everything we do. So it really hit me when she said, you have a gift that you're not using. And, you know, I sat down and I was just praying. I said, wow, like, what do I do with this? You know, I play music, we minister together, we do music, but I can do more. And uh, that's when I started, you know, like thinking of art again, and I went back to it. And, uh, you know, it's just, um, the idea of glorifying the Lord with everything you do. That's pretty much what drives me to, to the art part, you know, in my life. And I just want to 
praise the Lord with everything I do. You know, and I use my hands for that. Um, I haven't really done anything original because, you know, it takes time to like go back to it. Like I said, I stopped for a long time, probably like six, seven years I haven't painted. And I just started again. So I'm doing like, you know, like copies of other work right now until I go back to it. But I still, you know, like pray. I still think that what I'm doing right now is, is praising God, you know, and so that's what I'm doing right now. I want to glorify the Lord in everything I do. And I feel like sometimes, um, you know, yeah, music is beautiful, it's another language, but also art is another language. You know, you can express a lot with one image. So that's what I want to do now. You know, and I'm going back to it slowly. It's taking you know, a little time because I have to learn a new medium, you know, because I learned oil. That was my main thing. And now I'm doing acrylics. But yeah, so I'm still learning, you know, every day is a new, and it's a school, you know, so I have to learn uh, all these new things and, and I enjoy the, the whole process because when I finish a painting, I do see God's, you know, face. So that's all glory to the Lord. <laughs>